Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Germany is known for its masterful engineering, and once again, they are leading the way when it comes to fast and effective manhole repairs. Philippe, the manhole repairman, arrives at the repair site with his highly customized man manhole repair truck. The process begins with securing the site with safety cones as a specialized manhole repair truck arrives and parks a few feet away from the manhole. The repairman then grabs his tools to remove the manhole lid and the debris basket inside it. which is installed to collect materials that could block the flow of water or waste in the sewer system. After tightly securing the cover and putting the lid back on, he uses a circular frame and chalk to draw an outline around the manhole. This process helps him mark the area around the manhole, which is about to be relentlessly excavated by the gigantic truck he's brought with him today. The truck is equipped with a 3.6 foot wide milling machine enclosed in a cage. Die ist extra für konzipiert, um Kanaldeckel auszufräsen. Äh, man kann sich vorstellen wie so ein großer Lochbohrer, welcher an der Seite noch äh, extra Teile hat. Um das ganze Loch konisch auszufräsen, dadurch wirkt das sozusagen wie ein Stopfen in der Badewanne. Das heißt, wenn man damit ausfräsen und einbauen, ist das ganze konisch drin und kann sich dadurch eigentlich fast nicht mehr setzen. Die kann man umbauen zwischen der großen Fräse, äh, was wir heute jetzt den ganzen Tag drauf hatten, aber es wurde noch kleiner. The machine is so robust and powerful that the job is completed within two to three minutes. The truck moves past its excavated area. A lift system is installed on the truck to help them remove the concrete cover and replace it with a new one. While the old concrete cover is being moved out and the new structure is brought in by the same lift system, one of them further cleans up the remains around the manhole cover. They neatly clean up the area before proceeding to the next step. The protective cover is then removed and replaced by the debris basket or shield that was originally removed. After tightly securing it into its place, a new pre-casted concrete cover is placed on top of the manhole shaft. Danach wird ähm, das Ganze mit einem Haftmittel eingesprüht. Der sorgt dafür, dass der alte Asphalt sich mit dem neuen verbinden kann. Äh, oben, oben dran an der Kante wird Fugenbahn verlegt. Das ist dafür, um das Ganze gegen Wasser abzudichten. Weil wo Wasser reinkommt, kommt auch Frost rein und Frost explodiert. Das ist schlecht für den Asphalt. So, kurz drauf. A special seal with a specific purpose is also applied around the manhole. Once the tape is applied, a protective lid with the same diameter as the manhole cover is placed over it before Philippe and his partner can start pouring in the new asphalt concrete. Producing asphalt concrete on every manhole repair site is the responsibility of their third partner, the man manhole repair truck, and it does its job with great efficiency. Thank you. 
One of the main reasons manhole covers are routinely replaced is because over time, the ground beneath the manhole can shift due to settling, soil erosion, or external pressures. This can cause the cover to become misaligned or uneven, making road conditions dangerous to road users. Philippe also uses a compacting machine to compress the asphalt into the road, eliminating air gaps and ensuring a tight, durable surface. After completely compressing, the protective lid is removed and the cast iron manhole lid is placed on top of the manhole cover. A little more asphalt and a few more rounds of the compacting machine ensure the road is equally surfaced. The insides of the manholes are also cleaned, and hot water is sprayed to flush out any dirt or asphalt left on the manhole cover. As a final touch, a layer of sand is scattered over the manhole area to soak up moisture and add grip. However, Germany is not the only country leading the pursuit of engineering efficiency. Next up on our deep dive is the specialized two-way forklift truck operating in Turkey. Once the worker arrives on site, he simply hops out of the truck and into the forklift to start moving crates around for the day. As the name suggests, the two-way forklift comes with dual controls. On one end, a truck cab is designed to be driven on the road like any other construction vehicle. On the other side, a forklift is designed to provide optimum mobility and lift capacity for agriculture and farming. The two-way forklift provides a clear front view of loading operations, giving the operator complete and active control. With a total lifting height of over 30 feet, this two-way driving system also makes it an efficient lifting vehicle for the job. This unique vehicle not only reduces manual labor for crate management, but also vastly increases farmyard efficiency. For instance, 
The operator can load around 30 crates of farm produce within an hour. The next stop on our engineering journey is this unique truck with tracks. It's wandering the fields of the Netherlands with one purpose, to collect soil samples. So the tracks are for if the, the, the land here is very bad, so we cannot drive in it. So we lift up the truck and with the tracks we can move over the field. And it's also to pick up the truck and make it uh, stabilized so that we have the whole weight of the truck to do the soil testing. Two testing rods are lowered into the ground to test the subsurface conditions of the soil. They can go down as far as 20 meters below the surface or until the cone reaches a hard layer. Each rod contains a cone with an electronic measuring system to record tip resistance and sleeve friction. The cone penetration truck can determine strength, behavior, and water pressure in the soil. This helps determine the construction requirements for roads, bridges, and buildings to be erected on the land. These clever cones can even detect unexploded ordnance and contaminated plumes. This is a typical cone, an electric cone is an, is an old one, but I, we have opened it until to show it to, to everybody. Um, this cone, we can measure the tip, that's this part, and we can measure the friction. And in this cone, we are uh, put strange gogs uh, to measure the, the power you need to go into the ground. Perhaps the most impressive thing about the cone penetration truck is that it's fully fitted with computers to provide real-time data. So it depends, it can be contractors, it can developers who can hire it. So if they start with the big projects, so they know all the companies they need for the testing and for the building. So we are really in the first uh, assignment before they start building. Last but not least, it's time to meet the mighty log stacker being built in Sweden. This factory in Sweden is the birthplace of the Svitruck TMF, a powerful log stacker used by sawmills and paper mills worldwide. We have 25,000 um, square meters of factory and we buy the raw material, we gas cut, we bend, we do uh, everything in-house. We make around one machine per working day, five days a week, so around 200 machines per year, and mainly for the European market. The process starts with a robot arm that spans a 360 degree axis, giving it unrivaled precision when transporting, assembling, welding and positioning complex and intricate parts. Helen's steel bars are used to build log stackers because of their extreme durability, strength, and wear resistance. The stronger the bars, the heavier the log stackers can carry. 
High capacity cranes are needed even to lift the bars around the factory. Metal inert gas is then used for welding the pieces of the log stacker together. Of course, protective gear such as welding helmets, gloves and boots is needed to keep the engineers safe from sparks and spatter. With a solid wire electrode constantly providing heat to the welding gun. The entire log stacker frame is designed to repeatedly withstand immense loads without cracks or fractures. Specialist software is even used to find the perfect strength to weight ratio. We buy components from Volvo, Caterpillar, Kessler, uh, hydraulic pumps and so on and uh, we make one complete machine together. Kemper suction arms are used to suck harmful fumes away down black tubes during the welding process. A hydraulic press brake is then used to shape the steel components into the perfect angles for construction. The finished frame is almost 23 feet long and designed to carry loads of up to 28 tons over rough terrain while remaining strong and stable. However, it is also designed with little headroom and soundproofing for the driver. The big uh, Sway truck TMF 3222 lift 32 ton of uh, cargo uh, and uh, have a grapple that comes from 8 square meter up to 11 and a half square meter of volume. And it's mainly used by big sawmills and paper mills, unloading trucks and uh, railway cars. Whether it's this powerful log stacker or the ingenious trucks we saw previously on this journey, it's clear that machines have undoubtedly made life easier for mankind. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.